Hey guys, Mabel here again. Just going to be talking to you today about video analysis. Is this stuff actually useful? And when can you use it? So why? Why would you use a video analysis? Well, thanks to video analysis, athletes can gain a competitive edge. They can correct faults, they can increase motivation, and they can maximize their strengths. So in this week clip, we're going to be looking at the five we bullet points there about preventing injury, working on weaknesses, um, modeling others, uh, evidence, and scouting opposition. So firstly, preventing injury. So we use video analysis as an at an individual level to get people to biomechanically um, go through and, and reflect on our technique um, and the best part about this is, is that we not only improve our performance through it but we also can make sure that we are trying to prevent injuries. So on the left here we have a runner okay, and quite often running is one of the main activities that, that people do, particularly young people in New Zealand. So yeah, if your running technique isn't great, if biomechanically it's off uh, then you can actually cause a lot of long-term injuries. Um, likewise, in our other example up here, deadlifting or lifting weights of any nature can be very dangerous if your form is wrong. So we use biomechanical analysis again, video analysis, to make sure that our technique is being on so that we don't injure ourselves. And in deadlift, we see a lot of people doing the old curved back okay, and doing a lot of damage to their lower spine. It also helps us to work on our weaknesses. So dragon boating over here, it's something that our school really gets into. And as we know, you know, we can work on our weaknesses as a team, or we can work on our weaknesses again individually. So breaking it down biomechanically, seeing what we're doing right and wrong, uh, and really trying to improve those weaknesses so that our time or our performance or whatever it might be can get better. Okay, likewise, if in the team sort of scenario, okay, where is it that we're going wrong? Is our defense not moving up in one line? Okay, is it that um, we, we've got the wrong pattern going on in attack? Okay, all of these sorts of things we can go through, we can step by step analyze them uh, and then work on them collectively. Modeling others means that we can copy off the best. Okay, we have a wee camera up here, so we have a lot of people who go down to just even at school level, go down to a game uh, and record that game. Uh, and that's they want to really model off the highest level of, of players. So they might just focus on an individual again and see what, say, Dane Coles does. Um, if you're a hooker in rugby, okay, they might see how Maria Tutoya moves around the court uh, in, in netball. Okay, so they'll put, take, take their own device down, or alternatively, they'll obviously use uh, footage from Sky Sport or something along those lines. Okay, likewise, this other image here, these are the um, 60 tries that the All Blacks scored in 2016, and that's what they were scored from. Um, so this is just a, an analysis of, of the, again, the All Blacks. Okay, and you can see that this is the line that they're trying to score at. Um, if we... Um, yeah, the green uh, scrums, so they scored a lot of tries from scrums close to the line. Okay, the red lineouts, they scored quite a few tries from there. Um, one from a tap penalty all the way back down here. So, yeah, analysis of going through and seeing how these tries are scored. Um, what I love is all of these um, turnovers, trials of turnovers, trials of kick returns for the All Blacks, and a lot of other teams are trying to emulate that. So they're not kicking anymore. Okay, why? Because then the All Blacks will return it uh, for a try. So, yeah, stuff like that to model off others and to get better. <clears throat> we also use it for evidence. So a lot of people, particularly young athletes, they'll get told by the coach, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, or you're doing this incorrectly, uh, or you're doing this really well. And quite often as a young athlete, we don't, um, we don't believe that person. And so we... Um, yeah, we need evidence to, to actually get us to understand and to believe it. You know, we might argue with the reference and say, no, it wasn't offside. But then when you have a look at the footage, you, you can't really lie with it. Uh, you can't really, um, you can't argue with it, I should say. Likewise, you know, if you feel as though you're doing something poorly, your coach might actually have the evidence there saying, no, you're doing it really well. So, you know, it's really handy for that, and that breeds that motivation as well, okay? Um, so lastly, we're going to look at scouting opposition. So this is, I think, underutilized a lot, particularly by school teams. 
So, you know, we're looking over here at lineout. Lineout calls, it's a bit of a secret code. And if you just go back and you watch game footage of, of your opposition team before you play them, you can figure out what that code is. Okay, in football, you can figure out what format they play. They might have little moves, particularly just one or two players at the front, little moves that they constantly do. If you understand that move and you know that it's coming, boom, you can stop it pretty early on. In PCs, so in hockey, okay, each person who's taking a PC, the, the stats are there for people to go through and to figure out, okay, this person is going to do a drag flip and, you know, 50% of the time they go to the top left corner, okay, 25% of the time they go to the bottom right corner, whatever, whatever. So the stats, and people use video analysis to figure out the stats so that the goalkeeper has more of an opportunity to save that, okay. Likewise in cricket and baseball, softball, okay, these video analysis to find out where that person's going to bowl or pitch the ball. Okay, and majority of the time, okay, they'll be able to set up for that. So they use anticipation to get into position to play that delivery because they know that 80% of the time it's going to be full, okay, or it's going to be outside off stump, or it's going to be a fast ball on the inside, or whatever it might be. So in this little uh, video, I love it. This is awesome. Okay, so this is a, a wicked example of the use of video analysis. Okay, so they figured out that the kicker here, he punts it in. It's Ryan 95% of the time, he punts it to the left. Okay. And the puck take on the far side by Stedman Bailey. So what's occurred now is that the opposition knows that the punt's going to go to the left. He'll be able to throw it. You've seen one guy over there. The rest of them has faked the opposition out. You do go on to the right hand side. Okay. And pretended that the ball is going over there. Because the big hill is out. Now watch the other side. They're going to make it look like the ball has drifted. So the ball's actually up here, right? The Seahawks chasing it. They all come over here because he can feel like he's going to be doing this. Okay, and off he goes. Down the sideline. Here's that touchdown. Brilliant example of knowing their position, knowing what they do, uh, knowing their plays and the percentage. 95% of this kicker's kicks go to the left. Okay, these guys manipulate that, use it to score points. And that's at the highest level of American football. And the NFL. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a rundown on how you could also use video analysis. So get stuck in. Again, you can use mobile phones, you can use iPads, you can use any sort of device to gain some video footage of either you or your opposition. There's also apps that make it really easy. So get stuck in as a coach or as a player and try to improve your game. See ya.